Hey, welcome back. Um, I held off on making this video until I got some information. Also, I had the vid and I was sick as shit. And I'm still coughing. So, if this video ends up being a bunch of short things edited together, it's because I'm coughing because I'm talking. But, I had to sit and watch part of the Baldwin interview on ABC News. And part of the interview, which you should go watch, I'm not going to copy it or stick parts because of copyright and who am I anyway to take their, their work. He says, I held the gun out like this and I cocked it and then I followed the instructions of the director or the woman and turned it, or the camera woman and turned it. And then when he let go of the hammer, it fired. He said he never pulled the trigger. Okay. First of all, let's assume some things. That the gun was in proper mechanical order. It wasn't malfunctioning. Second, that it was a model of 1873 Colt style revolver. A lot of channels have done, well, he, this isn't true, and then they won't even show you an 1873. They'll show you a U.S. Army model of 1860 or something like that. <coughs> Keep going. Um, the point is, it was this gun. This is a Colt model of 1873. This is a real Colt. All right. Now, assume that the gun was in proper working condition and assume it was an 1873 Colt, which is the common Wild West peacemaker type gun. All right. What Mr. Baldwin said can't happen. He is either completely unknowledgeable of firearms, ignorant, or misleading. I don't know which. I don't care which. I'm going to give you the facts on the way this gun works. All right. I've actually got two of them here. I have the Colt and my son Cimarron. First of all, on a Colt, the firing pin is on the hammer. It does not have a transfer bar like a modern revolver. So when you load this gun, you're only supposed to load five rounds in it. So when you close the hammer forward, the firing pin, and I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but if you look in this slot right here, the firing pin would actually be protruding or resting against the primer of a round. So you want to load it so it rests on an empty chamber, okay? So first of all, 1873 Colt, firing pin is right there. Second thing, on an 1873 Colt, it has a half cock. Half cock means you go back to here so you can unload it, open the loading gate, and rotate the cylinder and load the gun. That's actually considered the safety position for this gun. To get it off this position, you close the loading gate, you pull it all the way back, and then you would lower it onto the empty chamber. That's why you load one, skip a chamber and load four. That way it'll automatically time that empty chamber in to be done safely. And you'll see that on the range when we do that. If you get it off that rotation, there's a lot of fiddle fangling around to get it safe again. All right. Now, if I take this gun, finger off the trigger, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it with my right hand and I'm going to cock it with my left hand, all right? The gun is empty. We're going to roll it to the side. Can you see the chambers? The gun is empty. Three, four, five, six. The gun is empty. All right. Gun safe. Gun is empty. According to Mr. Baldwin, he was holding the gun. He cocked the gun part way on the director's instruction or the cameraman's instruction or camera woman's. It's actually difficult to just over this way a little bit. He cocked it, all right? I'll take my finger out of the trigger guard. I'll reach up here and I'll cock it. I'm going to pull it back this far. And I'm going to let it go. Can't fire. Hammer doesn't move forward. 
cylinder's not in lock. Cylinder's not in lock. Can't fire. Let's go back a little further to another click. Falls to half cock. Falls to half cock. All the way back. Locks back. Right? Haven't touched the trigger. Now, if I squeeze the trigger, yeah, it'll fire. But let me show you what I think really happened. He's not a gun person. I don't actually think he should even play with real guns because I think he's incompetent with firearms. He, from his own demonstration, he said he was like this and he reached up and he cocked it. If he was like that, his finger was in the trigger. Now on an 1873 Colt, you can depress the trigger. You're not pulling the trigger. There's nothing, no pressure on the trigger here. But if you've got the trigger to the rear, and you pull the hammer back, look what happens. Now that was from the halfway distance and the cylinder wasn't all the way into lock. So it, the gun still probably wouldn't go off, but if I pull the hammer all the way back and I let go, the gun will fire. And I didn't pull the trigger. I haven't, my finger hasn't moved. Dave, if you would, move it, zoom in right on my finger on the trigger. I'm gonna pull this back you'll see my finger does not move and every time I'm doing this the gun would have fired if you watch the old westerns or any trick shooters they call it fanning where you can go like that the guns designed to do that but if you don't know what you're doing people die it doesn't just apply to this gun it applies to this gun too this gun operates the same way. Firing pin here. But if I'm holding it and I'm actually squeezing the trigger in, just because I'm gripping the gun, I'm not pulling the trigger, the gun will fire. And yes, it is empty. I'll show you. Point of this is, that's the truth on how these guns fire. We're going to take it out in the range in a safe area and we're going to live fire it with live ammunition and you're going to see what I'm talking about and you decide who's responsible for that lady's death. We'll be outside in a second. Alright, we're out here. We're going to do the live fire portion of the video. We've got the 1873 Colt. Just for people to understand how safe we're being. We're on my range, on my land. And the only two people here are me and my son who's behind the camera. We have 15 acres of land around us, all woods, my range and its backstops. So we are being as spot as safe as you can be with this. First, I'm going to load this gun with five live rounds, just as I discussed inside. One, skip a space. Two, three, four. I should have one more in my pocket here. Hard to feel with the gloves. Five. Close the loading gate, pull the hammer all the way back, lower the hammer on an empty cylinder like we discussed. Now, I have my earphones on just in case there's an accidental discharge. There won't be one, but just in case there is. Um, when I tell my son to, he's gonna disconnect the mic because the mic will be overpowered by the gun going off. First, right hand, nothing on the trigger. Left hand cocks the gun, halfway, quarter back, let go, nothing. A little further back, nothing. A little further back, nothing. All the way back. Gun locks into the fire position. Now, if I were to squeeze the trigger, this gun would go off. We're not going to do that. I'm going to lower the hammer carefully so I can get to where I can rotate the cylinder around again. And now we're back to safe. Gun hammers down on an empty chamber. Now, this is what I think really happened. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an actor, an arrogant actor who doesn't have really any practical gun knowledge. I'm asked to hold the gun. I hold it like this. I keep a little rearward pressure on the trigger. I'm not pulling it 
because it hasn't reset yet. They instruct me to cock the hammer back. I cock the hammer back. Okay, from here, it doesn't fire. Why? Because the cylinder hasn't rotated over. It's quite a little further. It doesn't fire. Because again, the cylinder hasn't rotated all the way over. Let's go all the way back to the back. I still haven't moved my finger. That's how the gun went off. He pulled the hammer all the way back. He had his finger in the trigger guard, which kept pressure on the trigger. And that mic may not have cut out, so you may have lost a gunshot because I didn't give the instructions, but we're only firing one shot. Again, I haven't moved my finger. Hammer's all the way back. Watch what happens. Five rounds. All right. We're going to pause for a second. I'm going to get my son's 1873. All right, we have my son's 1873 Cimarron. This is a clone in 38. Again, half cock, open the cylinder, five rounds. One, skip a space. It's hard to get out when you got gloves on. Five. Close the loading gate, cock the hammer, lower it on an empty chamber. Just like we did with the Colt. Now, what's going to happen is, same thing happened with the other gun, but just to prove you that it wasn't a fluke, this is the way these guns are designed to work. First, finger out of the trigger. Left hand, half cock, a little further back. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. All the way back, if I squeeze the trigger, it would fire. We're not going to do that. We're going to lower it. Come back to a half cock a little bit so I can rotate it around. So it's on an empty cylinder again. Now the gun is safe. I'm an inexperienced operator, actor, whatever. I don't know anything about guns. They tell me to grab the gun. I grab the gun and I put pressure on the trigger because I'm just holding the gun to be safe or have good grip of the gun. <clears throat> they tell me to pull the trigger, cock the hammer back. I would probably do it with this hand, but for the video, we're going to do it with this hand. Nothing. The, cylinders aren't, the cylinder isn't rotating over far enough for it to fire. However, if I cock it all the way back, haven't moved my finger. All the way back. Haven't moved my finger. That's two live rounds. That's why this gun went off. Or that gun went off. Why an 1873 fires just as he described it. Now, that explains his problem or negligence or incompetence or whatever you want to call it. It, however, does not explain why there was a live round in the in the gun to start with. I'm just giving you the facts of how the gun works. You decide. Thanks for coming to my channel.